Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals. And in today's video, we are gonna look at Marvelous Designer and how you can use Marvelous Designer to do some cool simulation that goes beyond just doing clothing. This is something we've used before, specifically with our fabrics kit. And mm. just wanna show you a quick example. So when I did the, the marketing images for this, this was all done inside of Marvelous Designer, you know, then rendered afterwards. The nice thing about Marvelous Designer when you're doing this kind of product shot is that it's super interactive. If you're using something like Mcloth and Maya, it tends to be super slow yeah. because there's so much stuff running in Maya that it needs to keep track of as well. I'm sure there are other packages. I, I haven't tried, I don't know, Blender, probably <laughs> amazing for simming, um, but I really like doing this in Marvelous Designer because it gives me the freedom to sort of art direct the yeah. fabrics while I'm simulating. I can't think of anything more interactive than Marvelous Designer in terms mm. of fabric because it can do one thing. Yeah. You can do it really well. So this area, even if you're not interested in doing like super sexy clothing or fabrics or like tailored stuff, this here is still really nice. Even as a just, even for inanimate objects, mm. it's fantastic for that. So for this scene, just set up a quick, some few, a few primitives, and I just have a simple plane. Uh, set my particle distance to thirty. That sort of decreases the the resolution of it. Let's just show it here. So you can see the. The size of the plane is not very, or the, the, the particle size is not, it's not very big. If you change this to 20, you'll increase the particle size. Yeah. So we'll keep that set to 30, not three. So with that in mind, let's just turn off the wireframe. And then as soon as we sim here, you can just see this, this is gonna fall down on the tours. And immediately we just have like some super nice mm. fabrics. So the cool thing is because this is still in sim mode, it's very, very easy to drag around and sort of try to get different looks for your fabrics. Like just throw it around like if, like as if you had a blanket or something. This is a real pain in to do with something like N-cloth. You have to make like clusters for it here. And you can animate just, it. And yeah, exactly. Here you can just drag and drop and it's all real time. Let's say you find something you really like, like this thing here. Uh, what you can do, go and do is then just uh, decrease the particle distance, resim it. And then we'll get rid of a lot of the faceting mm. that occur that occurs within the in the fabric. Cool. Let's just lower that, raise it to twenty, just to make it a little faster. A really cool thing you can then go ahead and do as well is just play around with your fabrics. Now, this is just a default simulation now. Some some extreme examples would be linen. So with linen, mm. they get this tight sort of clothing. You see it's re-simulating right now. Exactly. And it's like if we um, just stop the sim, you can do that with space. If you hold, if you click on your mesh and press control F, it just resets the 3D arrangement. So back to where it was before we simmed. And now with linen, my linen is going to sim very differently to the default fabric. So you can see how it lays on top here. A lot more crinkly. Yeah. Um, and... This kind of stuff is really useful for if you're sculpting. Let's say you're doing more Renaissance style sculpting and you want to do like a little penis cloth or something for your little guy. Mm. And you just throw him into Marvelous and throw in a little penis cloth and boom, you're done. It's so nice with that. Also, like if you want to learn how to practice sculpting cloth as well. I mean, now nobody should ever sculpt cloth ever because that is the worst thing you can possibly do. <laughs> it takes so long. It takes so long. And, and honestly, it's going to look pretty crap as well unless you're really good at that. Yeah. Uh, what you can do a Marvelous Designer in, in like two seconds is so much better than what you can sculpt in ZBrush. Also because it's great for reference. Mm. Like obviously, one thing is if uh, like you do what we have done, we take pictures of each other with weird, it's like weird blankets on ourselves to try to get like uh, yeah. reference. Now you don't even need a partner in crime; <laughs> you can just do it all in a software. Yeah, so you don't need to hire someone to take pictures of you with like. I still remember you when I put like a <laughs> towel around and like walk you like pretending to be beast, and then you took photos. It's not ideal. So I want to show off a different shape here. Uh, let's just set our fabric to, actually, let's keep it to linen, just to show you something here. It's so it's such an important thing to realize that fabric isn't just fabric. There's no such thing as just as cloth. No. It's it's <laughs> all completely different. Yeah, they, they, they behave very differently. So if I am if I were to change this from linen, linen to something like a silk now, mm. you can see how much it stretches, right? Yeah. And one of the issues here is it's penetrating through. So there are a couple different ways you could, you could, um, fix this. One is to just select your object, the one you're simming on top of. 
and change the skin offset. So I had to set to eight before, three is the default, I believe. So that just puffs it up a little more and mm. just pushes it out. So this can help. Another thing would be to select your fabrics and then decrease the, the particle distance because that gives it more um, more topology. Yeah, lower number is, is higher density. Yeah, exactly. Because that's just the density of it. So then you get something like that. And that looks pretty pretty cool. Mm. Right? It's really nice silk that's draped on top of a non-specific cube. Honestly, this would take me like a full day to sculpt. <laughs> yeah. And it probably wouldn't even look as good. And also because it's really hard finding the specific reference that yeah, you it need. Is. I mean, it's like whether you choose to do this 100% like this or you choose to maybe maybe you use it as a base or yeah. whatever. I think this is a really, really good workflow, either if you're sculpting or if you're doing product shots. Yeah. Yeah, like it, it, even if you're just doing, you're not inter interested in characters or anything. If you have like like an old abandoned home or something, and you have just a ton ton of um, of boxes covered in cloth, this is this will be really really good for you. Yeah, and just another example of how different the look can be. So this is again, this is silk we have draped over here. You can see how much that like. It's really like silk, the chiffon silk is super heavy mm. and stretchy at the same time. And then if we go and we change that to something like the linen again, you'll see that to contract. And really I like, love linen. I love the texture of linen. Yeah. It's uh, it's almost like, almost paper-like. Yeah, it is. It's not very comfortable to actually wear, no, it but, really it's, uh, but it's super interesting from a sculptural point of view. And then again, we can go in and change the density, mm. resim do that for a little bit and then you can totally take this into seabrush afterwards just to sharpen mm. it up because one of the problems with marvelous is it, it might look a bit soft but um if you just take it in there and just sharpen it up properly yeah we we actually did a full tutorial series on this at some point where we just showing how to do this the, the original cloth in marvelous then take it into seabrush to sculpt it yeah because the, the two tools work really well together i think that's a super cool workflow it's yeah. it's something that i've used a lot and it helps I mean, it just, it takes your, your sculpt and your character or whatever you're doing to the next level. Yeah. So. Really does. So Marvelous is also, cloth in general is, is used for a bunch of different things. Even if it's hard surface, you might have, uh, I know for, for gravity, they used a lot of end cloth yes. just for that. Because they had space, sh space stations, which had, uh, uh, they just had a lot of cloth on them, like uh, f just general fabric on them. So you had yeah. these incredibly, incredible hard surface objects with awesome fabric on top. This That's actually a, something I would want to do in Marvelous now. Mm, exactly. They used they used um, end cloth for that, and yeah. they wrote a lot of custom tools for that. But today, you would just use Marvelous yeah, for that. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, if you wanted to replicate something that they did on Gravity, you know, you could have the, let's say you have the fabric suspended like this. So we just, we'll just pin this in place a little bit. So just imagine this is a- What's a hotkey for pin? So that you hold on uh, double, the W key, and then you just click with mm. your mouse on it. You can also click it away. So these are like the insta pins. These are Such my, a cool tool. my favorite thing about Marvelous mm. Designer. So you could do something like that. And if you then sim it, let's see here. You increase the pressure. Now it's gonna be interesting because I haven't actually done this before. Let's, let's hope see. the gods of CG are smiling upon us today. <laughs> let's do with default sim. Go back to our fabric. And that's a good distance. There we go and then we just if you start simming now we'll just get the regular sim so it'll just start to fall down if you then increase your pressure a little bit you get mm. this so obviously you can play with this definitely some a ghost in this <laughs> in this tours <laughs> so let's see here so if we unsim now you can see everywhere it's been pinned down right we get these super mm -hmm. cool sort of stretchy patterns so this is something you could also do if you wanted that uh, space suit like mm. um what do you call it? Like, yeah, that, that spacesuit feel yeah. to it. Um, where, kind of like from Gravity, where everything was, I don't know, like it's, it's hard to explain without a reference, looking at a reference, but it's that classic, everything is sci-fi now, where yeah. everything that's hard surface and a little bit sci-fi, everyone always wears some kind of fabric on them. Mm. For some reason, I don't know why. Because <laughs> it looks cool. Because it looks cool. Um, and then you could use something like the pressure to sort of like bring mm. it up that and nicely wrapped donut <laughs> <laughs> it's super nice let's just uh, flip the normal here so we can see it oh i undid it <laughs> but you get the point like yeah. so that you would get something like this right with these super nice crinkly bits and super easy to 
actually make your your characters look super awesome. It's so, probably a tutorial we'll do in the future. Probably, yeah. So it's like even though even though Marvel Designer is primarily used more as a tailoring tool and for characters, it, you can use it for a bunch of different things. Essentially, anything which has to do with cloth, yeah, or simulation of of cloth, yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh it's definitely one of my has become one of my favorite tools when working mm. because I can just use it for so many different things. Yeah. I'm very curious what's gonna happen when you click the button now. Let's just try. So these are this <laughs> just me pinning all these down now. Um like that. Is it gonna explode? Who knows? Yeah, it's probably gonna explode a little bit. So <laughs> And the recording the, just cuts. <laughs> now the normals are flipped, so now this will start to sag, right? Mm. Um I'm curious if I let me do that now. So now we kind of have this balloon thing. We can go in and we can flip those normals again. Resim it. <laughs> there we go. And you can just see all the kind of crazy stuff we can get from this. And this is this is using a torus. Yeah, this is just a torus. We're using torus, a cube, and a torus and a cube <laughs> combined. So if you actually make some really interesting base shapes, you can yeah. make some super interesting stuff here. So there we go. Then we have this weird looking torus <laughs> thing. But look at look at how much extra detail yeah. we're just getting in there. So. This is definitely a tutorial we can do in the future, yeah. talking about for characters and stuff. But this was just to show off a little bit of what can Marvelous actually do. Yeah. With outside of the character Yeah, the maybe. unexpected stuff. Which, <laughs> yeah. Which uh, this is something I didn't really know and uh, know about until you were doing you were doing the fabric stuff we showed mm -hmm. you showed you guys before. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be really curious to hear if you guys have any interesting uses of Marvel's designer because sure. this is at least one very interesting one. Yeah. And I'm sure there there are a bunch more. Yeah. So if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time. And thank you for, uh, thank you for watching.